guys, welcome to the Friday Waffle. Um, yeah, it's my own fault. I should never have uh, Sally this in Nova Bugs uh, questionnaire thing. <laughs> because apparently people prefer to be able to see things like body blows, Vectrex, and ghosts and goblins running rather than look at me, can't think why. So yeah, I've got a nice comfy seat there and I've got a bloody hard seat here so I'm sitting in the hard seat so I don't ever say that I don't do go out my way for you guys. Aye, anyway, Friday at last and I was actually off today, uh, not off as in sick as in holiday. Um, I had 10 days to take, I had 10 days left over um, which I was supposed to use by the end of March so uh, I've basically been taking most Fridays off. So I was off today. Um, my wife was off as well, so my wife and daughter went up to the shops and what did I do? I started uh, making a video, uh, which I didn't actually finish. Went out a run, still got running stuff on, still a bit. Just as well, uh, it's, you can't actually smell through videos, not yet anyway, because uh, you probably smell me. I'm going to jump into the shower in a minute. So I thought I'd get this Friday waffle done nice and early. So uh, I trust you've all had a good week. Um, what have I been up to? And now I was actually, what was I doing? I was playing my C64. I decided to just uh, have a C64 night. Um, brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. I'm really going to try and do that more often. Pick a system and play it. Um, I mean, I've actually been tempted to to pick a system and for like a week and just play that system. Um, because I think the problem we've got is when you've got far too much stuff, you end up playing nothing. So uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. I was playing, what was I playing? Oh, I was just playing different games. Um, having the, the Ultimate 2 cartridge is fantastic. You know, you can jump jump between games really quickly, but actually playing them as well. So I was doing that, but uh, the highlight for me this week, which you may or may not have seen, and if you haven't seen it, please go and check it out. Uh, I was speaking to Jim Bagley. Now Jim is a veteran coder of the spectrum, I mean, I don't mean that, that he's an old bugger like me, although he's almost as old as me, not quite. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jim, uh, we, we originally were supposed to meet up last week and something happened and we couldn't do it. So I contacted Jim at quite short notice and says, look, how are you fixed for Tuesday? Was it, no, what day was it? What, what day did I talk to him? Oh yeah, it was Tuesday night, I am thinking Tuesday during the day, I was working. Tuesday night, um, because my wife, she was away and I thought I'll have peace and quiet to use the PC downstairs. So I contacted Jim and he says, yeah, that's fine. So uh, we started about, what time did we start? Half past eight and uh, half past twelve came. <laughs> so it was literally three hours worth. Now we did take a wee break in between, but uh, it's, it's these things, once you start talking, it's just the time runs away. But... Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to, um, brilliant. Um, so yeah, I, I split it into two parts because I, I don't think even the most die-hard Spectrum fan probably wouldn't want to sit through three hours or two and a half hours of, uh, no, is it? in fact it's two hours forty, that's exactly what it was, of uh, me talking to somebody. So uh, I split it into two, so part one was put out whatever day was, Wednesday I think it was, and I've got part two, it's all done and dusted, it's even uploaded to YouTube, but I'm going to wait till next week to put it out, so that was fantastic, that was really, really good. Uh, I must admit, when I do one of these, uh, blame it's only, it really gives me, it gives me, the, the, I want to do more, you know, it just gives me the sort of incentive to go and do more, but the problem you've got with these is actually getting hold of people. Um, a lot of guys, I mean, there's been a couple of people uh, I'm not going to go naming names, but there's been one famous C64 programmer who I used to play his games back in the day, and it's not Jeff Minter by the way, um, and I've tried to get him twice, I've contacted him on Facebook, and both times he's read my message, but he just doesn't reply, he doesn't even say sorry, no, or anything, so I'm not going to go chasing people, uh, absolutely not, I mean there's there's a lot of cracking guys out there that are willing to, to talk about stuff, stuff like Jim, and various other people, you know what I mean, so there's, I'm not going to go chasing anybody three times. Um, I gave this guy the benefit of the doubt that oh, he may have forgotten, but whatever. But I've got loads of other people hopefully lined up, um, so it's a question of getting in touch. Um, I'm really hoping to get Jeff Minter on at some point. 
Um, I've been in touch with him and uh, Jeff's mate has uh, assured me he's going to uh, give him a wee nudge but I know Jeff at the moment, Lamasoft are up to their arse and stuff for like the, I don't know, they're doing a lot of stuff, they've got a lot of stuff on at the moment which is great because you know as I mentioned in my uh, Novabug video, Lamasoft are up there with one of my favourite publisher houses so that's that, that was this week um, Aye, so yep, it's the weekend. Um, I've not got, I, I, you know what, I see this every single week and every single week it seems to drag on and on and on. I've not got that many things to talk about this week. Um, one of the things I was, I was, uh, what was I looking at? Yeah, I was, I was, I came across a channel, a sort of retro gaming channel, and uh, the guy had a, a video of his Vectrex. And as anybody knows, I love my Vectrex to bits. It's you know, it is my favourite system, bar none. And uh, it was he was kind of mentioning about that he tried to buy one on eBay and it was going for daft prices, but he eventually got one. So I went on eBay and uh, had a look for Vectrexes. Now they do seem to have increased in value. Um, there's about three or four at the moment, and they're going for. I mean, one one of them. It's got, I think it's six games. Um, it's not boxed or anything. It's got two. Has it got two controllers? I think it's only got one controller. It's not boxed. It's got six games, and it's currently. I think there's three days to go, and it's currently at two hundred and five pounds. Uh, excuse me, which is way more than I paid for mine. Um, there's <laughs> there's a couple other ones which are about two hundred. Oh, pardon me, I've got hiccups. Um, <coughs> excuse me, which are going for about the same price, two hundred quid. So. They do seem to be gaining in value. I think as the hardware gets older, it's going to get rarer, and I think people are now starting to realise how good these. A lot of like the classic uh, video game collectors are now starting to realise just how good the Vectrex is, <coughs> which is obviously pushing up demand um, and pushing up prices. There's one, and this is just metal. There is one. I buy it now. It is unboxed. It's not got any games with it. It comes obviously with this game here, which is uh, what's it called? My what's it called again? Not Minefield. I Minefield. Yeah, it comes with Minefield. In fact, let me just let me just start playing it when I'm talking. It would be rude not to. There you go. I've not actually got the sound turned up. Um, ah, yeah, it comes with this game. Let's turn up the sound so you can hear it. There we go, ding dang do. Uh, aye, it's unboxed, it's only got this one game which is actually built in. And uh, the guy's got to buy it now, £499. Uh, I mean that's just crazy, there's absolutely no way he is going to get that. You've got to, you've got to wonder about the common sense, the logic that some of these people put on things. Um, he must go off his head asking that price because nobody is going to give him that and secondly he's just been bloody greedy I mean at the end of the day when you're selling something you can ask whatever you want doesn't mean you're going to get it and I sincerely hope that that guy does not sell it I don't think anybody is going to pay £500 as much as this is a fantastic system it is not worth £500 not at all so aye that's uh, eBay madness for you um, the other thing, the only other thing I've got on this to talk about, now I've spoke about this before, um, I've got no idea why it even crossed my mind, but <laughs> I don't know, I suppose it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to ignore the news and, you know, famous people who have been dying recently, I mean, um, you know, there's David Bowie, there's Lamy, there's Alan Rickman, there's a lot of people, there's been lots and lots of people, but you're going to annoy me, so I'm going to have to turn you down a wee bit, son. Yep. Um, I it's certainly, I suppose when you when you do get to a certain age, you do become more aware of your, uh, that you're not going to live forever. So uh, anyway, it got me thinking about my system. Let me, let me see. Shut up. Aye, it's got me thinking, um, what will happen to my, uh, or in fact what I've actually got here is, have you ever considered what your long term plans for your retro collection is? 
I thought I'd turned you down. Now be quiet. Thank you. Um, aye, what are your long term plans? Sorry, aye, what are your long term plans for the retro collection? Now, right now, um, I don't see my, I don't see this hobby ever waning. I really don't. Um, I mean, I'm 48 years old right now. I've been playing video games since I was about 16, 17. Um, I really, really don't see that ever changing. I don't. I can't see myself in 10 years' time deciding one day, no, nope, don't want to play video games anymore. I think this hobby is with me for life. You know, absolutely. So I don't see myself selling it because I'm fed up of it. I think there's... I think if possibly hardware started to break, I mean, just say for example, this thing here, stopped working, this thing here stopped working, if old hardware started working all of a sudden, um, would I replace them? Possibly not. I mean if the Vectrex stopped working tomorrow I'd absolutely go and replace it, but I, however I do have a spare Vectrex upstairs which I got with about 10 games for 70 quid about two years ago, but anyway. <laughs> um, I, I mean if, if all my hardware started to fail then I would probably consider getting rid of everything. Maybe keep the Commodore 64, keep the Vectrex, whatever. If my health started to deteriorate, I can never pronounce that word, started to get worse, deterior, deteriorate, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> if it started to get worse and, for example, say I went blind or, you know, I got arthritis in my hands, whatever, and I physically could not play games, then I would probably think to myself, well, I could, I would be as well trying to sell it and getting back some money. Uh, recouping some money but that's you know hopefully that will never actually happen I think what's more likely to happen is uh, I uh, eventually shuffle off to the great arcade in the sky and all this stuff is left um, now I've only got one one sibling I've got uh, Ava um, now obviously if anything happens to me then all this stuff is going to become Ava's um, <laughs> As much as she likes computer games, um, I'm not quite sure she's got the passion to keep this thing going. Um, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff, I have got a, quite a big collection of stuff, not compared to a lot of people. Um, what was I looking at? Yeah, it was a, it was a there was a, a YouTube video and it was basically saying, so I'm doing a Billy Conley here, I'm going off on a tangent. This, it was a, a YouTube um, video which I was watching which is excellent, really worthwhile watching. And it was basically talking to the guy back in the day. Um, now, as you're aware, Nintendo had world championships. They basically had these world championships where people, I think you had to qualify. Then they had the final, um, it was in San Francisco or something, back in 1990. And basically, anybody that won, you got given a gold cartridge. It was like a gold, it was a Super Mario or... I don't know, track beat or something, doesn't matter, it's a, it was a gold cartridge. Now, apparently there's only 12 of these ever made. Um, and about 3-4 years later, so I don't know, 1994 or something, this guy uh, decided, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of one of these cartridges. Now, these things now sell for sixty to $100,000. They're just ridiculous what they go for. But this guy, what he did was apparently he worked for some company where he had, in fact, no, I'm talking nonsense. There was a magazine, there was a Nintendo magazine, which actually, I think it had the names and addresses of all the winners. So this guy got in touch with the winners and said, eh, oh, I believe you've got a, a gold Mario Kart cartridge which you won a few years ago. Would you be interested in selling it? And I think quite a few people are like, yeah, I don't do anything with it, you know, at the end of the day, back in 1990, you wouldn't think for a second that this is going to be worth anything, you know, it's a novelty thing. So this guy apparently ended up buying 10 of these cartridges, um, <laughs> which apparently he's now sold on, um, I mean, he's got an absolute vast collection of stuff, he's got something like 15,000 games, he's got 150 arcade games, but mental. But uh, I, it got me thinking about, about my B collection, thinking what would, I, what would happen to it? Um yeah, it kinda it kinda I mean like, like I said I've not got 
compared to him, my collection isn't big, but I do have a lot of stuff. Um, the value of my collection, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I'd maybe say three thousand pounds, something like that. It's hard to tell, really. Um, it's all the wee incidental things like wee SD card readers and things like that. These are all things that cost a lot of money, which probably, you know, somebody didn't know anything about computer games. If they were to come into my room and say, right, what can we sell? They would probably look at stuff and think, these are for the skip, and probably throw a lot of stuff away. Um, so in that, with that in mind, I would almost be, if I thought that my health was ailing and I wasn't going to be around for very long, I think what I would probably do is try and sell stuff because I would obviously be aware um, of what it's worth and try and recoup some money so I can then say to my, my daughter, there you go, there's a, a chunk of money, rather than, you know, <laughs> she's going to look at things in here and think, rubbish, you know, just th throw it in the bucket. But uh, we know different, we know that some of these things are worth, mil uh, worth money. So, yeah, at the moment I certainly don't have any plans to, to get rid of anything. Um, if things were to change, um, I mean, if I was to lose my job and lose the house, then obviously you would try and sell stuff to kind of help pay the mortgage, whatever, but uh, it wouldn't last very long. But yeah, have you got any plans for your retro collection? Have you ever thought about when you shuffle off your mortal coil, um, what are you going to do? What's going to happen to the collection? At the end of the day, do you really care? Possibly not, because you're not going to be around to actually worry about it. But uh, I think the thing that concerns me more is, or worries me more, would be that I was to kick in the bucket and uh, all this stuff was left to Ava and, uh, I don't know, half of it was flung in the bucket. You know, she doesn't know the value of some of these things. I mean, some of the, the stupid things that, you know, any non-retro player would, they wouldn't think twice, they wouldn't think it's worth anything. Um, but obviously, we know different. So, maybe if it got to the stage, I was, my health was ailing, I would maybe flog it and try and recoup some money. Right, before I've got a couple, <coughs> excuse me, that is, that's all I've got to talk about. Um, really not too prepared this week, guys, but I think last week's, it kind of went on a bit, it went on for about an hour. Um, <laughs> in fact, what, what's quite interesting, it's, I suppose it's slightly depressing as well, um, but any YouTuber will, uh, will appreciate what I'm going to say. There's a thing on YouTube, you can you can look at various statistics, or analytics as I like to call them, and you can look at, you know, how many views you're getting, um, what countries people come from, what's your channel, etc, etc, etc. But there's one of them that tells you your average percentage of a video that is viewed. And I think in my case it's something like, uh, well there's one of these wee, <laughs> one of these little spiders that runs about a million miles an hour just on my wall there. Uh, aye, it tells you, uh, yeah, what was I talking about? I think my videos, on average, they're, I think something like 30%, people watch about 30% of the video then switch it off. So it's quite possible you're not even seeing this part because you've already switched it off. <laughs> and when I first saw that, it kind of made me a wee bit, oh, because I used to sometimes think, longer is better, you know, you want to see a massive, massively long video, which probably isn't the case. Um, I mean, I've seen me putting a video on, um, really enjoying it, but if it's going to last too long, you end up thinking, right, I'll, I'll switch it off and I'll watch it later on. And uh, sometimes I do go back to it, and a lot of times I forget to go back to it. So yeah, it's interesting to see that a lot of people don't watch the end of videos, especially if it's going to drag on and on and on. So I'll probably try and keep my, try and keep the Friday waffle uh, slightly less, I think. Um, aye, so anyway, right, I've got, before I, I've got two questions here. Um, which I'm going to obviously jump into, but I don't usually do separate pickup videos, so I'm not going to do a separate pickup video. I'm just going to let you see a couple of things that I got today. Um, I have got the what have I got? I've got a ColecoVision, which is an absolutely fantastic um, console. Love it to bits. Got some games for that. I have. You might even be able to see this actually. Cubert. Not tried them yet. Um, I've got the mighty. Epix Pit Stop, that's meant to be one of the best games for the system. I shall probably do a wee look at these once I actually start playing them. Now I remember seeing this game, I don't know if you can see that, Smurf. That was one of the first ColecoVision games I ever saw. I always thought it looked really, really cool. The graphics looked excellent on it. It's apparently meant to be quite good. So we'll see. Um, 
These are all for the ColecoVision. What's this called? Cosmic Avenger. I've got absolutely no idea what that one's about. Um, Tato. Is that based on a uh, arcade game? Frontline. Tato. Hmm. I'm not too sure. Not heard of it actually, but I thought I'd buy them all anyway. Uh, Star Trek. <laughs> it's probably going to be Pish. Interestingly, this one says, for ColecoVision and Adam Family Home Computer System. Anybody that may not know, ColecoVision obviously is a console, but they brought out a keyboard so you could actually turn it into a proper fully fledged computer. But apparently they're as rare as hen's teeth. And the last two is, that's a great game, Choplifter. I think it was Dan Gorlin, that's the guy that wrote it. And the last one is Super Action Baseball. So yeah, that's my pickups. I've got them today actually. Right. Before I go, two questions. First one from uh, Steve D. Thank you, Steve. Um, are there any old consoles, computers that you'd particularly like to add to your collection? Now, that's a great question. And you know what I actually replied to Steve? I don't think I've ever actually spoke about or even thought about is there a system that I would like to get? Um, it's, it's a fantastic question. So I'm going to attempt to answer it. Is there a system I'd like to get? I mean, I think on quite a few occasions I've said, I don't, there's nothing that I want to get. I've got everything that I want. But the thing is, I'm a sucker for these sort of less well-known systems. You know, um, maybe they might be rubbish. I mean, perfect example is the video pack. Now, I know I'm probably going to get flamed away, but... When I did my look at um, a few weeks ago, I was basically saying how rubbish it was. A lot of people have jumped in saying, oh, there's some great games for it. But I think the fact that I couldn't get something working probably didn't really endear me to the system. But I love picking up obscure systems. Um, I mean, one that I got about a year ago, maybe slightly less, was the uh, the Sword M5. <laughs> I've, I've had it switched on twice, I think it is. But I just love, I don't know, it's, it's bizarre. I love having these old systems. Um, they're more kind of curios than anything. Um, now there is, yeah, I mean my my uh, big holy grail for many many years um, was the Atari 800, the original big tank, because it's about that size and it takes two grown men to carry it. That's how big it is and heavy. Um, you lift up the lid and it's all metal, it's got this big metal aluminium, it's not, in fact it's not aluminium, it must be cast iron I think. Um, I wanted an Atari 800 for many many years, but they go for really really um, daft money. So I wasn't going to pay that and uh, I happened to see a guy on Gumtree selling an Atari 800 for I think it was 80 quid. And uh, I got that, I also got, was it one or two disc drives? No, I think it was one disk drive. Uh, I got an Atari 400, loads of software, books, you name it, for something like eight. I think it was £100 and that included the delivery, so that was an absolute steal. So that was my holy grail. Um, somebody was actually selling, the, I don't know what the name of it is, it was an Atari console. It's based on the, the sort of Atari 800 and it's quite distinctive because it's got these big sort of buttons, like pink green, yellow and blue or something. It's quite ugly looking. Now I did actually see one getting advertised I'd probably say two years ago and um, that was at the point I was wanting Atari XL and I saw this thing and I think it was going for pretty cheap and I remember asking the guy is that, you know, what is it? And he, he told me what it was and I'm like nah, I'll no bother. Um, in retrospect I should have bought it, you know, I'd like to have bought it. There is somebody actually selling one at the moment. I think he's won 60 quid for it. Um, so I don't know. I've I've been spending a wee bit of money recently, so I'll probably give that a miss. But uh, holy grail, is there a system I'd like to get? Handheld-wise, um, I don't think so. I've, I've, I would like, I wouldn't mind a Lynx. But the problem with a Lynx for me is, although it's a fantastic system, it's such a big system, 
the screen's quite small, um, it takes, it eats batteries like nothing on earth. So it'd be one of these things, I'd probably buy it and it would probably not get played because the thing is, all these Android um, consoles that I've got now, they can play all these systems perfectly. So really, there's no, there's not really any need to play it. And the thing is, it's not like you're playing a Lynx on a PC where you're sitting at a, you know, a monitor playing it. You're playing it on a handheld, so you're getting just as good an experience, but you're actually getting a better experience because the sound and the picture quality is a hundred times better what the original hardware was. So hardware wise, console wise, or sorry, handheld wise, I don't think there's anything. Um, I did have the opportunity to pick up a Game Park Blue, which uh, Mark liked to back with Prime, you'll know what I'm talking about. I did get a chance to pick up one. Is it 60 quid? And you know what? I was really, I was that tempted to get it. It was one of my mates who was selling it. But common sense got the better and I thought to myself, why am I going to buy that? Because I'm not going to play it because uh, it was really an emulate. It was really a system to emulate other systems. It was, I mean, it was a fantastic thing for its age, for its time. You could play, you know, Commodore 64, you could play a lot of systems. But there's way better out there now. You know, you've got your GXD, you've got your uh, whatever it's called, uh, GPD XD. <laughs> you've got all these Android tablets and consoles which play all these machines much better. So there's really no point in buying a prehistoric system which was really designed to play old systems. So because I've got better now. So now, as far as uh, handhelds go. I don't think there's anything. That's not to say I'll not see something tomorrow in Retro for Sale or in Gumtree or whatever and I'll buy it, but I'm, there's certainly nothing I'm looking for at the moment. Um, Computer-wise, um, I've kind of got everything that I want. I love Atari machines. Apart from that one I just mentioned, I love Atari machines. I mean, I've got Atari 800, I've got the Atari, what was it called, 400. I've got the Atari XL, 800 XL, I've got the Atari XC130, the XC65, I've got the Atari 2600, I've got the Atari 7800, uh, yeah I've pretty much covered all the bases with Atari, uh, obviously Lynx I've just mentioned but you know I'm not going to bother getting it for the reasons I've already mentioned. Commodore wise, I've got my C64, I've got a couple of C64s, I've got my Amiga which you can see behind, behind me playing, what is it again, Body Blows I think it is. Um, I've got a VIC-20, um, I don't know if it works actually, but I have on occasion seen people selling, what is it, the Commodore 128 which is meant to be really good but it goes for quite a price, it goes for about £100 and it really wouldn't give me any, any advantage over what I've already got. There's the Plus 4, there's the C16, now again, it would be, there would be two machines I would like to have, I mean in an ideal world if I lived in a huge big house, or a big massive basement and had you know shelves all the way around, I would have all these machines, I would buy them and the ones that I didn't have any games for, I would stick in a cabinet so I could just look at. But the problem is, this B room is very, very wee. I don't have the space for them. So if I bought it, it would end up in the loft doing nothing. So I have resisted buying these. Um, any other home computers? Spectrum wise, I'm not a big Spectrum collector. I just want to have a reliable Spectrum system I can use. Now, what I tend to use is my. Uh, that new Spectrum that came out, it's in old hardware, I've done a look at it actually, um, it's, it's the Spectrum 128, sorry the Spectrum 48k shell, but it's got a 128 memory, it's a brand new Spectrum that this guy designed from, sort of from the ground up, so I've got that, it's got an SD card thing built in, that's what I use for playing my Spectrum games, but I've also got, I've got a couple of Spectrum 48ks, I've got a Spectrum Plus 2 Grey, I've got a Spectrum Plus 2 Black, 
I've got the spec up, excuse me again, uh, the spec on 128 toast rack, which goes for a fair bit of money. Um, I've got one of these as well, so I've got all these machines. Um, Spectrum wise, there's nothing else. Um, I'm not interested in boxes. I mean, I've seen me buying a system a box and I've bloody flung the box in the bucket. I've got no interest in boxes. Um, they're just going to get damp and faulty bits anyway. The only computer that I can think of which I would love to own, and I have mentioned it in the past, and I think the chance of me getting it, there's probably more chance of me running winning the London Marathon. Um, which means I'd have to, I'd need to run it half as quick as I do at the moment. So, yeah, you can make your own mind up about that one. And that is the Sharp X68000. This was a machine which came out around about the same time as the Amiga Atari ST, but it was a lot more powerful. Um, it was quicker. The graphics were absolutely phenomenal. Um, the problem being, it only came out in Japan and it was all in Japanese so you have to be able to speak Japanese to use the thing because it was a computer you actually had to type in commands and it's all in Japanese the second problem you've got is they are absolutely impossible to get a hold of they really are I mean you very 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 rarely get one come up on eBay um, chances are if you did see it it would probably be for sale in America or Japan and thirdly they go for absolutely stupid money. The games go for stupid money. Um, they, it's it's a phenomenal system. I mean, the graphics. Apparently, it had the same sort of hardware as the Capcom Capcom games. So stuff like Strider, this bad boy here, Ghosts and Goblins, and its sequel, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts came out for the Sharp X six eight thousand, and it is an absolutely mind blowing conversion. All the all the Capcom games were mind blowing. You know, your Strider, I think Strider 2 came out. Um did R type come out in it? I can't remember, but it's an absolutely phenomenal machine. Um I think the fact that it's only came out in Japan, that's kind of you know, it makes it extra special. But I think the chance of me getting one of these is next to nothing. Um, one of my mates did have one, Paul, who's hopefully watching this video Paul did actually buy one. I don't know where they got it from. Um, I never got the chance to see it actually working, but uh, he told me recently, I think he'd sold it. He said it was just difficult to, to get working um, because of the fact that it was all in Japanese and also um, getting all the games was next to impossible. So, yeah, it's a pipe dream. It's something I would love to own, um, but the chances of me getting one is probably zero. So anyway, but there's nothing else. I mean, I will, you know, I'm a video game and I like to buy stuff. There will be systems that I buy anytime I get. I mean, I'm, I'm, I always find it really hard to resist buying some of these real obscure systems. There was actually a guy who was selling, was it the Interton or something, game system. Now, apparently it only came out in Germany and it was one of these really early consoles with the, the you know, sort of Benetone type games. I think I had um, inter sort of changeable cartridges, but... Uh, he was selling it for about 20 quid and I, I was very tempted to buy it but uh, common sense got the better off me right okay um, I've got one question to go um, then I'm going to draw this to a close because my arse is absolutely killing me sitting on this bloody hard chair so I'm not going to guarantee you're going to get a waffle <laughs> with this behind you because my arse is so sore sitting on it I've got a nice lazy boy leather chair right there which I can't sit on and I don't want to move it around, um, it's too much hassle. So the very last question is from, you've guessed it, Mr. Down the Rabbit Hole, Kev. Thank you, Kev. I um, always appreciate you taking time out to, to, I mean, Kev's as reliable as they come. Every every Friday morning or Thursday night, he always uh, posts his question. So, for the Friday Waffle, hi Alan. Have you heard about the crowdfunding campaign to make a handheld ZX Spectrum? And he's given me the link. It looks like a PSP but with hundreds of Spectrum games loaded. Apparently Sir Clive Sinclair himself is part of the project. I assume you're buying one as soon as it comes out. <laughs> you obviously know me too well. Or have you reached maximum capacity when it comes to handhelds? Now, great question Kev. A um, couple of things. Um, it has been funded. 
it has been funded apparently, so it will definitely be coming out. Um, you're mentioning hundreds of games now. I did watch like most gamers with interest with the Vita, the Sinclair Vita. Is it? Ah, it is a Vita. Um, it kind of looks alright. I was going to buy one, and then I decided not to at the last minute, and I was kind of glad I did because, I mean, it's you know, it's about that size. It's not particularly big. Um, if, the thing for me is, it's you need to control it using the gamepad. Now, a gamepad on a an 8-bit machine isn't very good. Um, I mean, I've got. I've, why would I want to buy that for 100 quid when I've got a Spectrum behind me and I can use a proper joystick? Um, another thing for me, which kind of I was a bit disappointed, and I'm sure a lot of people who did buy it were disappointed, is the fact that I mean, yeah, it comes with a thousand games. I would probably say 950 of them are absolutely unheard of, never heard of them. Um, I mean Dave Lonboy's post 1975, he did do a, a video about it, uh, go, and, go and check that out. There's one or two classics in there, now, I would say there's more games missing than there are actually in there. Um, the few reviews I've seen of it, you can see the guy scrolling down, bum 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 basically looking for a game that he's heard of, you know, it's that bad, there's so many games you've never heard of, you know, what they should have done, and I know it's difficult, it's all down to licensing, they should have, if they'd got all the top games in there, then I think it would have sold even better, um, it's still £100, I'm certainly not going to pay £100, it's the kind of thing if it came down to maybe, I don't know, if somebody was selling one for 30 quid on eBay, I'd probably buy it, just because, <laughs> I might not use it, but I'd probably buy it anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the choice of games was one thing. Now, I do know you're probably shouting at the TV saying, wait a minute, you can put your own games on the card. That's absolutely true. But apparently you've got to sort of fanny about getting it to work. All the games, the thousand games that are on it, they're all programmed. All the keys have been set up so you can basically start it. Because the problem you've got with like a Spectrum, it'll tell you to like, press G for joystick. Now, obviously this thing has only got a, is a keyboard. It's got the gamepad plus three or four buttons. It's got four buttons, and as it goes start and select, I think it is. So there's only six buttons, so you don't have... I think there is a, a virtual keyboard, but that's a pain in the arse. But, yeah, you can add your own games, but you've got to fanny about and set them up. So that's what put me off getting that. Now, this portable one, um, it does look really nice, I have to say. I've not obviously seen it running at all. Two things. Um, one, I'm guessing it'll have the same thousand games in it which means that 950 of them you've never heard of. Um, secondly, and this is a big thing for me, I have got, I've got my GPD XD, I've got my GXD, the new one which I haven't actually got yet, which is coming, it's maybe coming out this month I hope, or it's supposed to be the first quarter of 2016, so hopefully I'll get it this month or next month. Um, these systems are so powerful, they will run Dreamcast, they'll run PlayStation, they'll run all these systems. So I have got absolutely 100% perfect emulation of the Spectrum already on um, what I think is a, a better system. Now you mentioned about Sir Clive Sinclair being involved. I think, I would take that with a pinch of salt, I think he's probably been consulted how much input he's actually had into making the thing, I've got my doubts. I remember seeing an interview when they were talking about the Vita and it was this guy who was involved in the Vita interviewing Sir Clive. Now when you actually watch the video, I don't think they were in the same room. It was just like the, the background in that was different. Where, where Sir Clive was sitting, it was different from where this guy that was interviewing him was sitting. Um, I'm not saying he's not been involved in it, but I think it's probably a case of he's putting his name to it and that's about it. I don't think he's physically designing it. There's other people. Now, I'm not knocking this thing. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. But like I say, I've already got multiple systems that can play the Spectrum and the Commodore 64 and the NES and the Amstrad and the BBC and the PlayStation and the SNES and the Mega Drive. So, do I really want something? Um, I mean, I, I had to kind of laugh. All I've done is I've taken a PSP and they've stuck the Wii 
the wee sort of Sinclair uh, flash, the wee coloured rainbow thing across it. And of course that's getting people, you know, wetting themselves, anticipation and excitement to get one. Um, <laughs> they don't realise that this thing has been out for, for years. You can play you can already play a spectrum perfectly on a, an Android system, but obviously a lot of people don't really they're not interested in that. But because it's got it's got spectrum written across it and it's got the wee flash across it, people will be all over it. So aye, it does look interesting. Um I was laughing at what was I looking at? Was it ColecoVision? Um I saw an advert um for I'm not gonna say the name for an online company that sell handhelds and that kind of stuff. And they, I got a mail, an email, and it was, you know, they had a, a sale on. And one of them, was it ColecoVision or was it something else? I can't remember. It might have been a ColecoVision or was it the Mega Drive? I, I can't remember, you know, it doesn't matter. But it was a, a console. It was one of these remade consoles, you know, built in 60 games. And I thought, that's not bad for like 20 quid. It may have been a Mega Drive, actually. And uh, I was looking down the games, I thought, oh, that's pretty good, you know, Streets of Rage 2, blah, blah, blah. Then it also had uh, included as a free cartridge with 100 games. And I thought, whoa, it's 160 games for 20 quid. So I had a look at the list of games that this cartridge supposedly had. And I kid you not, I wouldn't have known one game in it. It was all your generic stuff like Parachute, Dive Bomber. It was just... It's almost like that it had been written in basic. <laughs> so I think for them to try and sell this as being like, you know, extra games, yeah, they are games, but are the games you'd want to play? Probably not, probably not. But uh, anyway, listen, that is it. I'm going to draw this video to a close. I um, hope you enjoy watching it, guys. I hope you have a nice weekend. Um, as usual, thank you to all the support, all the subscribers, all the comments. I've been getting a lot more comments recently. And that is fantastic. I mean, it really helps to kind of keep this thing going. Um, and it helps to encourage me as well to keep making videos. So, thanks to all my existing subscribers. I always appreciate your, your support. Thanks to anybody that's just recently subscribed. Hopefully you'll uh, see enough in my videos uh, to stay with me. Um, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And as usual, thank you so much for watching.